this is the second part of you talk. Uh, we're still speaking with Dr. Uh, Professor uh, Dimitra Papa Dimitriou of the University of Patras in, uh, in Patras, uh, Greece. Uh, the first part we talked about uh, uh, some uh, issues which are uh, softer. Now I'd like to uh, talk about uh, football and governance in Greece and uh, how uh, the, 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 the Greek uh, football sphere is changing. Welcome once again, Professor. Uh, would you please, uh, uh, in 2004, Greece stunned Europe, stunned the world by winning the uh, European Championship of Football. How, being a researcher in football, and I'm sure you're a fan of football, what was the feeling for you personally and for the Greek people in 2004? That was very unique feelings, you know, being very proud of the team, you know, being very proud of, the, of, of being there and achieving, you know, something which we never thought, you know, we would ever achieve in our life. Because if you remember this particular uh, Euro Cup, it was, you know, like we went there as outsiders. Nobody was betting for us, you know, that we we're going to get to the second round. And we managed to get, you know, to the cup and come back. That was a big celebration, you know, just a couple of months before the Olympic Games. And uh, it was really a memory that we'll never f forget, you know, we'll never, you know. We always go back and remember what you can achieve you if you have a passion for what you do. And these athletes, together with uh, this big coach, Otto Rehagel, you know, they, they proved that they had passion and they had uh, vision and, uh, you know, and they implemented, you know, what they had uh, learned to do into the field. It was such a, a strong collective with a good character uh, of players then. Uh, but since then, Greek football has struggled. Um, where we thought Greece was going to go far in the next World Cup uh, in, in 2006, and but then since then it's been down and, and down. But w what do you see as a researcher in governance? Uh, w what has been the experience of, of Greece? That's a difficult uh, question to explain why a team goes to come come or goes down. It's a very complex question, but. We lost the coach, that's for sure, you know. We, he didn't want to stay anymore in, uh, in Greece, and that's, you know, understandable. And then, you know, the next coach is probably they couldn't provide, you know, the, the guidance and the, and, the, and the support that these athletes wanted, you know. Of course, the athletes left to the different European uh, uh, teams at that time after this big, you know, achievement. And they did a very great career career abroad, and that probably was another reason that they didn't have any more so much passion, you know, to 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 give to the national team. But I would see as well the deterioration of the performance of the team from the perspective of governance in terms of how the the national football federation is organized. I think they can do better in uh, in. Uh, uh, in uh, how they compose the team, how they select the coaches, how they they motivate the athletes, how they support them with uh, with uh, additional services in order to 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 love you know to to be in the national team and to do their best when they are in different competitions. I think there is much more uh, room for improvement in that direction. Uh, let's now look a little bit uh, further across the big divide uh, at FIFA. Uh, last year, there was an, an, an unraveling at FIFA. The big corruption cases hit the uh, headlines, and uh, there been uh, there was a shake-up, big shake-up. Uh, uh, Mr. Blatter lost his, his role. We now have a new FIFA president, and there seems to also we have a first uh, woman uh, secretary general. She's completely out of, uh, from outside. You know, she ha has a background in in, in development and uh, at, at the UN. What changes do you suppose these will bring to FIFA as a global football body sport that people are passionate about? Mm -hmm. FIFA, yeah, had hard time uh, times very many years ago. Uh, lots of written and negative things have been written about. FIFA at the academic level, at the news outlets, it's, it was really, you know, a major, 
uh, we were expected FIFA to be a leader in good governance and was the opposite thing for many years. That's that's what the facts say. Now we see a big change. We see some reforms, you know, announced for that. Uh, we want to see these reforms, you know, to be implemented and see what we know they, uh, what improvements, structural actually improvements ha have been taken at that level and what are the results out of it. And uh, overall, you know, it would be nice for FIFA to, to change its internal culture, you know, it's uh, uh, the way, you know, that they, they develop their regulations and they implement the regulations so they control and monitor their internal activities because the, the impact of the sports is tremendous and we want this organization, you know, to reflect that kind of, uh, of power that the sport has, you know, in the, in, in the, in the real world. And uh, don't uh, undermine that, you know, when FIFA is working, you know, uh, with uh, following good governance principles in depth and uh, in, uh, into, you know, to a great extent, that reflects the, 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 the automatically the performance and the governments of the national football federations. And we are a country, Greece is a country that, you know, has suffered of a FIFA that was not taking, you know, the right stand in the right, uh, the right moment, you know, when, we're have, when we had major problems of corruption in my country in football. I can relate with that uh, in Nigeria. Whenever there was any e little issue li in the federation between uh, members of the federation or between uh, the federation and the government, there was al always uh, the threat of uh, being banned by FIFA. Uh, I, uh, did this also happen in Greece? Uh, exactly. Yeah, it's been now more than 10 years that we have that kind of crisis where the government is intervening in the National Football Federation, you know, to to solve problems of uh, legal compliance that th and uh, illegal action that's going on. And uh, it was always the time FIFA was coming in and was uh, threatening, you know, the government that uh, the, the teams would be banned and were not going to participate in the in the, in the in the in the different championships, and instead of you know getting into the problem, the governance problem, and try to understand what's going on, and uh, and solve the problem, you know, uh, with a with a proper way. So uh, this year, actually, we're right now in a crisis. Uh, a lot of members of the board, you know, of the board uh, of the National Sp uh, Football Federation, are uh, have been. Uh, accused for a number of illegal actions and they uh, res they denied to resign from the board in order to to prove themselves themselves innocent in the regular uh, courts there were other issues as well in terms of how how we we compose the 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 arbitrary you know committee of the association and the government you know stepped in and uh, demanded you know from the, for the board to to bo some of the board these board members to resign in order for the the justice to take over and we are glad to to see that fifa you know backed up the government you know on the side and they said uh, clearly that uh, uh, we have to leave the justice you know system you know the judges to to f make final decisions about what's going on and uh, the, the board members have to, to help the procedure and get out and, uh, and uh, defend themselves in the, in, in the, in the, in the, just, in the justice system. It, it's, it's, it's a very good development, actually, because it's going to help a lot the, the government, you know, to, to, to clean up a little bit the mess in the, in the football. We have problems with the referees as well, major problems with the referees. And... Um, uh, there is uh, illegal betting as well, problems with uh, match fix fixing, you know, there are allegations about that, that we have not been investigated yet. And we want to see the National Football Federation, you know, uh, taking uh, uh, definite steps in terms of cla cla cl clarifying these cases and uh, uh, informing the public about uh, the results of that uh, investigations. Now, when usually there's the problem with the uh, federation and the uh, government, the federation, especially in football, always uh, look, uh, they say that uh, the rules of FIFA say that matters of, of football should not be taken to, to civil courts, but to the uh, court of appetition for sport. Isn't this, isn't this a governance dilemma whereby the government funds most of the affairs of, 
of the football of the national football board but then when it comes to being uh, accountable they say FIFA I mean the rules of FIFA says we should not be accountable to civil courts to civil laws how do we resolve this has FIFA been siding too much giving too much uh, opportunity for lack of accountability to national federations how do we resolve it? You're, you're, you're right. Uh, it's a matter of accountability. It's not a matter of who is controlling whom and who is autonomous. It's a matter of, you know, when you receive resources of any source, you know, you should be accountable and reporting and uh, transparent about your financial, you know, activities. And that's the problem with the national sports organizations, that they are not reached to that level of good governance, you know, to to follow, you know, the basic principles which, you know, they own to do that. As, and that's the only way to defend the autonomy. Uh, that's, uh, you, you know, autonomy doesn't mean that, you know, you're above uh, uh, the criticism of the people about how you use resources. You don't uh, use your own resources. You use, you use public resources. You use your resources, where, which is generated by the, 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 the game itself, and et cetera, et cetera. So you need to be transparent, and you need to be accountable you know, to different uh, stakeholders about that. And uh, you need to defend all the choices you know, any time you know, in a public space. And they don't do that. That's a major problem. Actually, in, in, in Greece, the government has uh, stopped funding uh, the National Football Federation because of that kind of problems. So, you know, they, they're not receiving any more money from the public because of that, because they never, you know, account back. They never, uh, they're not transparent with their transactions and their activities. Well, it's a hope that uh, things get to start improving with the changes at FIFA. And uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Fafat Dimitri. We appreciate your time. This past week has been uh, really great. Thank you guys uh, for joining us on Real Talk this week. We will bring you the best brains in sports governance, in sports marketing during this year. And, and uh, we thank you for all watching and your comments your suggestions we take it on board uh till next week when we bring you some other our new guest have a good weekend bye bye <laughs>